Welcome back to our YouTube channel where this week we'll be kicking off with our Better Together series. We'll be focusing on our Employee Service Foundation. So what actually is Employee Service Foundation? It's part of our employee workflows at ServiceNow and on this slide we can see the capabilities outlined in the table. It includes the key components for any HR workflow tool and it's essentially the building block for creating a positive employee experience. So what it includes is a self-service portal for employees. We've got the differentiation of HR cases, as well as knowledge management and an agent workspace, which is the one-stop shop for the HR agents. They're able to work on all their cases in one central place. Now, this solution is smaller than our HR service delivery product, and so it is better suited for our small to medium businesses. And because of this, it's at a more affordable licensing price. Now, quite often while talking with our customers, we hear that they've customized IT service management or have been using incidents to manage employee cases. Now, while this is possible, it's not something that we would advise because the nature of HR cases and IT incidents are so completely different. For example, incidents are typically accessible by a wide team, including IT staff. So HR cases that are raised as incidents might be accessible by people without the proper authorization and can then view this sensitive information that they might not have the rights to see. So there could be a risk of confidentiality breaches, unauthorized access, or even violations of data protection. And also using incidents for HR could require some configuration, which is a risk of becoming overly customized, making things like upgrades more difficult. Whereas some benefits of moving to Employee Service Foundation and using HR cases means that you can now have segregation of data between HR and IT. You can maintain integrity and confidentiality between both types of information. This data will also only be accessible by people with the correct roles and access based permission. And there's a clear separation of duties between IT and HR teams, preventing any conflicts or interest or misuse of this information. Allowing proper audit trails to follow your HR cases so it's all logged and monitored correctly, as well as being supported in ServiceNow with specific workflows and details on case forms specific to HR. And just one power of using ServiceNow is being able to house both IT service management and HR on the same platform. So there can be overlaps between the two, for example, onboarding a new person, getting them the right equipment, creating requests for assets, and that being able to manage through IT and HR working hand in hand. Now moving on to our demo, we will be looking at two key personas today. Maria, who is our manager, and how she navigates the employee centre, and all the benefits that we'll see in there specifically for HR. Then we will move on to Harry, who is our HR agent, and we'll take a look at the dedicated HR workspace specifically for Harry's persona, and see how he can manage different cases and utilise the workspace. Now let's go on to the demo. Now let's see the Employee Service Foundation capabilities in practice in a demo. Now, as we previously outlined, we will be looking at two different personas. Starting off, we're starting with Maria, who is an employee, but specifically her role is a sales manager. Now, this is the Employee Centre Pro that she can access. It's that one-stop shop for her. She can see targeted communications, She's easily able to find information using knowledge bases, and she can do that by just simply doing a quick search. She can see her requests, the journey she's on, perhaps anything she needs to do. But also she can see things like the company news and any videos as well that are relevant to her role. And that's the thing, this is all relevant to Maria. Now, first thing we'll look into is her profile. Now, of course, she can access her profile and have a look at specific information around her job role, her work location, but also around her team as well. It will also list any contacts or emergency contacts, which Maria can go ahead and edit as well. Now, what she can access from here is the organisation chart. 
So within the organization chart, she can obviously see the people who report into her, but also her man manager as well. From here, she can look at the profiles for those particular employees as well. Now, if we return to the home page, because Maria is a manager, she also has access to what we call the manager hub in the employee center. Now, the manager hub will show her specific information for those employees who report into her. It's a very useful place for her to track conversations that she's having or perhaps career journeys that they're on. So if someone's on a growth plan or even if someone's a new hire who's on an onboarding journey, she's able to track all of that information from this one place. So for example, if we open up the new hire journey, she'll be able to see where that employee is what tasks they've managed to complete, and perhaps maybe if there's anything that she needs to do on her side. So it's really helping her just to create the picture of what is going on within her team. Now, if we return back to the Manager Hub, what's also useful is she can drill into things like the team skills. So she can have a look at who has good specific skills in different areas, the top strengths, or perhaps where people want to grow as well. And this can all be presented to her in a report or a graph as well. As well as the team skills, perhaps the insights will be useful as well, as this just shows the team availability for the next week or perhaps their employee type. And of course, it's all configurable to what Maria wants to see. She's also able to see perhaps when they'll be going on annual leave as well. So who'll be in the office or perhaps who might be away. Now, if we return back to the homepage, what we'll do now is utilize our AI search so that Maria can remind herself of the maternity leave policy. And this is as easy as just simply searching maternity leave. And what it will do is using the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning in the platform, it will show a list of results relating to her search. And of course, she can go ahead, she can have a read of this particular article relating to maternity leave but she can also interact with it as well. So was it helpful? What would she rate it? And perhaps she could leave a comment as well. But as well as using an article, we also have microsites which are available in the employee center. Now these can be accessed by going into the microsite section, or you can either visit it from the target, targeted communications as well. Now for Maria in this particular case, obviously she's wanting to know about the parental leave guide. And this essentially just provides more useful and targeted information, as well as the stages that need to take place in order to go on parental leave. So here we can see an overview of the basics, how the company can help, but also might, what might be involved in the process as well. So now let's have a look at how Maria can go ahead and start raising a request. So recently, she has a query around her pay in her most recent payroll, and she'd just like this to be addressed as quickly as possible. So if we go up to our help center, we can see that each department has their own section. So we can go easily into HR, we can find those particular topics that are relevant, and here it's under pay and time, and I'll select the compensation. And here we have the pre-configured templates for the requests that Maria can go ahead and raise. So if we select payroll discrepancy, she just needs to make sure she fills in all of the required information. Now, Maria also has the option to add attachments so she could attach her latest um, payroll or she, it will also take her to other articles that maybe she's missed. And this is all about the self-service, so preventing her perhaps raising a request that doesn't need to be raised. But obviously in this case for this demo, we'll go ahead and submit that request. Now, as soon as it's submitted, in a matter of seconds, we can see that it's already been assigned to Harry Taylor, who's our HR agent. But Maria can see when she created it, she can see what that specific request was about. And she can also go ahead and type messages to Harry in the employee portal. So she can track anything that is going on relating to her request here. So if we switch over to Harry, who is our HR agent, he is utilizing the HR agent workspace. So again, it's all specific to human resources. Now, Harry is able to do all of his work from this one workspace. 
He can see all of the cases, he can see those high priority ones, he's able to have dashboards as well, but also things open for his team. And if he did need to visit another site, he can do so from here as well. But let's actually have a look into the case. So here we can see that payroll request that Maria raised on the employee portal side. Now, what's important to say is that as soon as she raised that request, it has been identified as an HR case. So it's not getting confused with incidents or tickets. Instead, we've got our specific HR case. It's even identified that it's specifically relating to payroll because of the type of request that Maria raised. And Harry can form a picture here of what's happened, but also he can have a read of the description of what came through from the particular request that Maria filled in. Now, if this was a slightly different case and maybe a bit more personal to Maria, he would be able to go ahead and have a look at things like the emergency contact. So who is actually listed as an emergency contact? He can see information around the cases that have been opened before for Maria. But what's also useful is he can have a look at what knowledge articles have been opened. So Maria obviously opened the maternity leave knowledge article. If that was related to this specific case, then it would be able to flag this to Harry so that he doesn't duplicate articles and sending her things that she might have already read, which just prolongs the time to resolve the case. Now, if we return to that details section, Obviously, Harry wants to identify that he's received the case and he's working on it. And to do this as quickly as possible, he can just simply use the response templates. Now, these are just pre-populated, pre-configured templates that Harry can simply copy and paste to the work stream so that it's leaving a comment and leaving Maria in the know the whole time. Now, obviously, Harry can go ahead and use the platform to investigate what's going on. But in this particular case, because it's relating to payroll, it needs to be transferred on. And for Harry, that is really easy to do. He can just simply transfer the case, select the transfer type, so whether it's going with the existing case number or a new one. He can select what it's around, so it's obviously around payroll, and also where it's going to go. So what, what is the service that it's affecting? Where does it need to end up? And that's probably going to end up with finance. As soon as he presses OK, that case will be routed on to the relevant department and the relevant person will be assigned to start working on it. So as easy as that, we've seen how Maria can raise a request on her end, how it's picked up in the specific HR agent workspace, and then how it can be routed on if it can't be dealt with by Harry, our HR agent. And that brings us to the end of the demonstration.